what I'm going to do is just to kick off the morning, uh, uh, and this very first part it is sort of perhaps a bit parochial because it is about the, 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 the well-being of uh, future generations act. First time I've been able to say that uh, properly. Uh, and uh, just to sort of give you a little bit of an introduction to it, to prepare for the minister coming, because the minister will, uh, will talk about it, obviously, but I just wanted to sort of walk you through a little bit. Now, you all should have had and have taken away from yesterday, if you haven't, make sure you get one today, uh, this briefing document, which does take you through the act in some, in some detail. Um, the first thing I wanted to say, really, is that this is, has been part of a journey uh, for Wales. Uh, it's been absolutely central to the devolution <laughs> process. Uh, sustainable Development was part of the first Government of Wales Act, uh, setting out a duty on the Government of Wales to promote sustainable uh, development. We've had you know, 15 years or more of experience of applying that duty. There have been a lot of people and a lot of organisations involved in that journey of development. Uh, indeed, many before 1999, 1998, in actually ensuring that in sustainable development was part of that duty. So this is, uh, has been a real team effort by a lot of people, uh, historically, going back, and currently. And I just wanted to highlight also, because we didn't yesterday, uh, with Anne. Uh, and Mike and Nicole from WWF, who chaired the SD Alliance, which was an alliance of NGOs uh, that played a really important part in shaping uh, the act that we have uh, today. Uh, so there's been a lot of people involved in that journey, and it's important to recognise uh, those, those contributions. That slide shows you that we've had a series of schemes, strategies essentially, to promote sustainable development. We've had a series of evaluations and effectiveness reports over that period. So the Act uh, draws from those lessons, because some things worked and other things didn't. And what we had was a very much a parallel system of a scheme, a strategy to promote sustainable development, and the programme of government. Uh, two things running parallel with each other, sometimes they touched, sometimes they didn't touch, to be absolutely honest. And it was only applied to Welsh Government. It didn't apply to the rest of the public, public sector, that, that duty. So that was a little bit of the history uh, that led to uh, the, uh, the um, Labour Party putting into its manifesto the concept of uh, legislation. At that time, it was called a Sustainable <coughs> Development Bill. Uh, and we had a whole series of consultations and discussion papers and white papers uh, and, and, and development uh, that's led to the, the final bill, <coughs> including the change of name. And it was interesting yesterday to, to have that presentation about the framing uh, of, of, of it. It's now framed very much in terms of future generations and the well-being of future generations. So it provides a framework uh, of how the public sector in Wales does business. Uh, and that's what I'm going to take you through. It's a framework which is based on uh, the principle of sustainable development, defined in the bill with a clear definition, and a set of principles and a set of goals. And so what I'm going to do is just take you very quickly through uh, what we describe as being the architecture uh, of, the, of the bill. Uh, to begin with, it sets out uh, long-term goals for Wales. Uh, the idea of setting out our long-term goals very much aligned to the concept of setting out the long-term goals for sustainable development globally uh, through the UN. Uh, they were goals that were initially set out uh, by Welsh Government that were then amended uh, and discussed through the Wales We Want conversation and through the involvement of stakeholders, uh, I mentioned the SD Alliance, particularly through the, the, the uh, co coalition of NGOs, that led to quite a lot of change in the original concept of goals, including an additional goal, uh, which was uh, the globally responsible Wales, which was added you know, later in the process in terms of the formation of the, of the bill. Those goals will be uh, underpinned by a series of national indicators and a requirement on government to set milestones of progress. So we're currently going through a process by which we're looking at uh, consulting and developing what are the national indicators set that underpin those goals, and what would be the milestones that government would have a requirement to set in terms of progress towards achieving uh, those goals. So in many respects, that's a really tough piece of work because it's the sort of beyond GDP indicators. Uh, we've had sustainable development indicators in Wales before, uh, not very well used, bit, 44 of them, not very well used, certainly not connected into policy. These indicators are absolutely built into policy frameworks. Uh, because public sector will have to demonstrate how it's maximising its contribution towards the achievement of those goals and the contribution <coughs> towards those indicators. So the duty 
on the public sector is to improve the economic, social and environmental well-being of Wales by maximising its <coughs> contribution to the achievement of those goals. Uh, there's a, a range, I think, 40 plus public bodies uh, that are uh, a court, if you like, under this, uh, under this duty, devolved uh, public bodies uh, in, in Wales. Uh, and on the right-hand side, as, as you're looking at it there, uh, there's a group of bodies that, are, that come together at, at a local area point called public service boards. Um, again, this builds on something that we have already called local service boards. It's where we're trying to connect uh, the public bodies to work more in a more integrated way. Uh, so if you're looking at uh, the weaknesses that we've had over the last uh, 15 years, everything has been delivered through silos. Uh, so we've had very little interconnectedness. So this is a structure that's trying to get public bodies to identify local needs uh, through local well-being assessments to producing local well-being plans, integrated collaborative working towards achieving common goals. And applying, and, and for me this is one of the most important parts of this framework, these uh, principles that make up the sustainable development principles, these government's decision make government's decision making processes that will have to be demonstrated by public bodies, which include long term thinking, uh, integration, the collaboration, Critical point about participation and involvement. Uh, it was participation, it was straight change to involvement because involvement was felt to be stronger in terms of, of, of active involvement of communities and uh, people impacted by decisions. And critically preventative action, long-term impact rather than end of pipe crisis uh, solutions. So in public sector decision making, uh, those principles will have to be seen to be applied in terms of uh, the sustainable development uh, principle. There's a duty in the uh, um, document, in, in, the, in the Act, for Welsh Government to produce a future trends uh, re report. Um, this is tied into the electoral cycle. Uh, so a year before the election in Wales, a year before the National Assembly election, Government will have to produce a future trends report. In other words, what are the global trends, what are the national trends, what are those things that are going to be impacting us in the long term that we need to take account of now in our decision making. Uh, so this is about trying to ensure a more informed electoral process, a more informed electoral debate. So in terms of links between sustainable development and uh, democracy, uh, you know, this is part of the framework about trying to ensure a more informed political manifesto is more informed political debate and uh, looking at how public policy then relates to those future trends. So that's a duty on Welsh Government. The principle of transparency I think runs through uh, all of this. Uh, requirements on public bodies to produce annual reporting uh, in respect of how they're progressing towards achieving uh, the goals and progress towards uh, uh, the achievement of, of, of the goals and the application of the principles. Uh, again, stressing this is about not additional, there's a concern around is this all about additional layers of bureaucracy. Uh, this is about building into existing systems of reporting requirements to be transparent about contribution towards the goals. So it's not adding layers, it is about making a common vision, a common purpose, a common set of principles applied across how we do business in Wales. Getting everybody focused on a, a set of objectives of what we want to achieve uh, nationally for the long term. So that transparency is important and the point about the role then uh, of the Auditor General uh, is built into the, uh, into the legislation. So again, looking at how the Auditor General for Wales, Wales Audit Office, play a role in ensuring how the public sector operates is uh, aligned to the nature of this legislation and there's a duty on uh, the Auditor General incorporated into the Act. And of course, you know, as far as uh, this uh, event is concerned, the importance of independent institutions. And uh, we will have um, uh, appointed through this process a future generations commissioner uh, who will have a set of legal powers and duties, uh, who will be full time, who will have an office and who will have a direct budget responsibility, uh, which is great, none of which, which I've had over this period. Um, <laughs> And I'll be pleased to pass on uh, to that appointment uh, when that appointment is made. 
at some point later this year, because that appointment process now will begin to kick in over the next few, few months. So at some point later in this year, we will have a future generations commissioner appointed. His or her office will start in, in earnest next April. Uh, that's when the sort of office will be properly established with the budgets and the duties uh, to be applied uh, effectively. Uh, he or she will have an advisory panel uh, to work with, set out in the legislation, and a set of duties, including uh, the production of that sustainable develop, uh, sustainable, sorry, future generations report. Uh, now that again is tied into the democratic process because that has to be produced a year before the election. So that's an independent report on how we are doing against what we're setting out to achieve. Independently produced, I always say, quite a brave decision by government to do that uh, because it's going to be a commentary in part on how the public sector has performed in its responsibility to achieve those outcomes. However, I should stress that this process is not simply about the public sector. The legislation applies to the public sector, but it is a process that we want to apply more widely across Wales as a whole and through the, the, the community, the third sector, and through the private sector. And I'll say a word about that in a moment. So, just to remind you, uh, those are the goals. Uh, we want to make sure they're related to, very clearly, uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals, although we're in advance of those goals being fi finalised. Uh, I should also highlight that the Trends Report that I mentioned needs to take into account uh, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and Climate Change Assessment, so you know, that's again built into the legislation. Uh, and we've. We've tried to expand the goals in terms of a, a description of what, they, uh, of what they represent. Very important point to make that these goals shouldn't be seen in isolation from each other. This is about a holistic approach. You know, we're not about creating another set of silos, of seven silos of people being trying to drill down in each of those areas because they're all interconnected. And that's the point that we have to make sure in delivery plans, the interconnectedness of those delivery plans uh, are, are stressed. So, the point I was making about the, uh, the fact that this is about a shared contribution, uh, we have mechanisms, um, it's worth highlighting, we have something called the Sustainable Development Charter, uh, which uh, I think now can play its really significant role, which is a voluntary charter to sign up by the private sector, by those people not in, in, imply, uh, impacted by the bill, by uh, the voluntary sector, uh, to say, yeah, no, we, we're doing business in Wales, we're committed, to achieving those goals and contributing to those outcomes. That's what we're, that's what our business is achieving to do, uh, committed to do, and we report annually every year voluntary on our contribution towards achieving those goals and performance in that way. So that's a sort of like a voluntary mechanism that is underpinning the uh, legislative mechanism to make sure that this is a team <coughs> effort towards common outcomes, not simply something that is applied to the public. Uh, to the public sector. But of course there'll be knock-ons from the public sector because the public sector procurement processes uh, will have an impact on private sector and, and, and third sector. Uh, grant processes, all of those mechanisms coming out of government will have a wider implication on, on the wider sectors. So those are the sort of core elements of the framework. You know, a set of goals, a set of visions, a set of outcomes that we're wanting to achieve, and a set of principles of how we're going to do business in order to get there. That's the sort of framework that the the legislation uh, sets out. I'm just going to end by referring back to the role uh, of the Future Generations Commissioner and in the document that you've got it sets out uh, uh, some of the sort of key, uh, key functions uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the Commissioner. Um, yeah, I think this role is obviously central to the bill, it's pivotal to the operations of the bill. Uh, it's a really important role, uh, it'll be a high profile role, there'll be lots of expectations around it. It's why we need now to make sure that we're providing the platform so that appointment can hit the ground running uh, when they're appointed uh, and have a, a, a structure behind them that they can build on. But it will be down to the new commissioner to shape independently the nature of his or her role. Uh, and in the process of the legislation, a lot of discussion about the independence of this function and the relationship between the function and government and the National Assembly. It is an appointment by Welsh uh, ministers. However, in the amendment processes around the bill, there's a much stronger uh, role for the National Assembly in the appointment uh, of, this, uh, of this commissioner. It's a seven-year term. Uh, 
uh, again, spanning, uh, you know, if, if you like, electoral, uh, electoral uh, side, sideways. Um, and one of the key functions, I think, uh, that we see the Commissioner undertaking is that outreach role, that connected role, to make sure that legitimacy, we talked a lot about the legitimacy yesterday, that the legitimacy is based on a, uh, a network, or on a, 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 an outreach, on representing and connecting with the issues that affect the people uh, of Wales. And that's why we piloted over this last 12 months this process, uh, which we modelled on the world we want, uh, and entitled uh, the Wales, uh, the Wales we want. Um, it was a, a process of, of significant engagement around Wales. It's a lot of learning from it. We're going to take that learning and apply it now for the new commissioner. It gives him or her a platform uh, to connect with uh, organisations uh, around Wales, which we're going to continue to build on in the intervening period. The conversation. We summarised it in saying, actually, what we were told in that conversation, that, that there are sort of seven key foundations that uh, the conversation highlighted. Uh, and these are the sorts of things that we need to make sure are being applied, particularly in those local wellbeing plans that I referred to, uh, in ensuring that the, uh, the wellbeing of future generations uh, is delivered through ensuring those foundations <coughs> are in place. Yeah, and I'll just comment on one of them, uh, which is the bit about how the public bodies together can ensure that actually a future generation in Wales gets the best possible start in life. And there's a lot of evidence coming through that if you get that right, then actually the well-being of future generations, you know, that's your basic building block. And that's something that we have to make sure is focused on as a very practical set of outcomes at an early stage in ensuring the public bodies work effectively to deliver that best possible start in life. Uh, we already, as you know Marcel, uh, plant a, a tree uh, for every uh, new, newborn uh, in, uh, in, in Wales. Uh, we plant a tree in Wales and we also plant this, a tree uh, in, in Africa uh, for that newborn as a symbol, uh, an important, iconic symbol uh, of, of that long-term commitment to the health of the planet and to the nature of what Wales represents and the set of values that Wales represents. And I'm delighted that Hungary has taken on that example and now applying that example in their own country. So that gives you a, a sort of quick run through of what the legislation is about. There's more detail in that briefing document. And I think we're at the point where I can uh, pad no more. <laughs> and pass on to the minister, who I think uh, is, uh, is is with us, uh, having just uh, completed this evening.